What's up, guys? Did you miss me? I didn't miss you. You've been gone for just for like a week. Yeah. Was this was this your cruise or was this was this New York? I mean, I, I came back from from New York. You know, like, I mean, you can just take vacations for some reason all the time, and just leave the rest of us to hang out to dry. Listen, this ain't about me. This is about our head to head to head. Your big ass head. Shut the. Bruh. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you enjoy watching our content, show us some love by liking the video. And ring the bell to make sure you get notified whenever we drop new content. We appreciate you all. Anyways, what's going on guys? Kevin here from Airsoft GI. And today, like I said, we're going to be doing a head-to-head -to -head -to -head comparison of all of the John Wick style high capas available on the market right now. And we're going to be doing a comparison of these based off of three criteria. Number one being the looks department number two being the performance, and number three being the overall best bang for your buck. And uh, I am wearing the certified uh, suit jacket that shows that I am the real deal for this job. It screams business, but ready to party. Exactly. Let's get to it. So we're gonna start with the looks department and uh, specifically talking about the trademarks on these guns. So the EMG and the JAG both are officially licensed by Combat Master, the KLI is not. So we're gonna have to award these two pistols with one point for being trademarked. We're gonna start with the trademarks on these slides. The EMG and the JAG both have the correct placement of the trademarks on the sides and on the top of the slide. Um, but I do have to say that the JAG trademarks on the slide look a little bit more pronounced, a little bit more poppy and, and uh, contrasted against the slide. Compared to the EMG, it looks a little bit more faded and the top is uh, just a, an etching compared to the JAG one, which is actually a bright white print. Moving down to the frame of these pistols, the EMG does have the 2011 STI markings on the frame. The JAG one does not, however, the JAG magazine base plate does have the correct Terran Tactical trademarks on the bottom compared to the EMG, which has the standard STI logo on the bottom. Now, if we're comparing it for accuracy in the movies, the JAG one wins in terms of the accurate markings. So overall, for the looks department, we are going to give it to JAG for having the correct markings where it needs to be compared to how it was in the John Wick movies. Next up, we're going to be talking about the overall finish of each gun, starting off with the EMG. Now, the EMG does have a matte finish with some polished lines across the slide, um, but the most disappointing accent of this pistol is the Magwell. The Magwell looks a little bit more like a light gray finish compared to the other accents of the gun, which is a deep black. Now, this makes it look like the Magwell doesn't belong on this gun, and it makes the overall look of the gun look incoherent. And um, personally, I'm not a very big fan of it, so I'm gonna have to dock some points for that. Now, here we have the Jag Pistol. The Jag Pistol does have a more shinier finish to the slide and the frame. Um, it looks not polished, but kind of like a wet, metal finish. It's a little hard to explain, but it is shinier and not matte. Magwell, however, is matte, um, and I don't know if I'm a fan of being mismatched like that, so I'm gonna say it does look better than the EMG, but uh, not the best. Finally, we have the KLI Baba Yaga here, and this one will have to have the best finish out of all the pistols. Uh, the slide is matte and does have those polished areas on the accent marks of the slide, similar to the EMG one. However, this one does have a matching matte magwell that makes this pistol look coherent and makes it look very clean out of the box. And I'm gonna have to give this one the looks department point. Finally, to round out the looks department of each pistol, we're gonna be talking about the features of each gun. Starting out again with the EMG, there are many things that I have problems with with it. Uh, starting off with the mag release. Now, the mag release is extended, so yes, we'll give it a point for having that feature. However, it is so far extended that if you grip it how normal shooters do, modern shooters, it'll fall out on you. Now, if you did want to shoot it one-handed or the old school World War II teacup style, this will work for you. However, if you're like me and you grip it like this, it will constantly fall out of you in times of battle. So we're gonna have to take that point right on back. However, the mag release button is removable. It is just screwed on, so if you don't like it, you can take it off. Just like that. Now moving down to the actual pistol grip. 
Out of all three of the pistols, the EMG has the weakest pistol grip, unfortunately. The finish of the, uh, what is it? Stippling. The finish of the stippling on this pistol looks like wet cardboard. Looks a little weak. Um, the texture of it is smooth, which is the opposite of what you want from stippling. Um, and the overall look of it, it just looks soggy. That's the best word I can think of. Um, so the features on this one is pretty subpar in my opinion. Additionally, I wanted to point out the sights on this pistol. The front sight does have a green fiber optic while it has a uh, blacked out rear. The feature that I did want to touch on is the outer barrel. Now the outer barrel is unfortunately not fixed. That means it does wobble quite a bit. Even when you are cycling the gun, you can see the outer barrel starts to move back and be out of place. Now next up we have the Jag, and the features on the Jag are pretty similar to the EMG. However, there are some points that I do want to point out are better than the EMG, such as the mag release on this one. The mag release on the Jag pistol is the same uh, diameter as the EMG one, however it does not stick out as much. This allows you to comfortably grip it without having your mag fall out on you in the middle of intense battle, which is nice to see. Um, the actual button on the mag release is not removable like the EMG one, but that's fine because this one is not troublesome on you when you're operating with it. Next up, the finish on the grip itself with the stippling is the best in my opinion out of all the pistols. The stippling on this looks like it was hand stippled. Um, the finish on it is very aggressive, feels very nice in the hands, and allows you to get a very comfortable and tactile grip while you're using it compared to the EMG one, which is a little bit glossier and, and uh, slippery. Now moving up to the rear sight and the front sight, the front sight on the Jag pistol does have a red fiber optic compared to green, which is accurate to the John Wick movie, so we'll give a little bonus point for that. The rear sight is blacked out, and uh, talking about the outer barrel now, the outer barrel on the Jag pistol is fixed, and I wanna point out that being a fixed outer barrel is a huge advantage in terms of performance. That means when you cycle your pistol, the outer barrel and the inner barrel, since the inner barrel is inside of your outer barrel, does not move while you're cycling. See? Stays in place, doesn't move forward, doesn't move up and down, it is fixed, which is a very nice feature to see in a pistol. Finally, here we have the KLI Baba Yaga, and starting off with the button like we did with the others, this one features just your standard mag release on any other high cap out there, which is not a good thing. Well, it's not a bad thing. Not a great thing. It's it's comfortable, it's normal. So we won't dock you for that. Next, I do wanna talk about the grip finish on this pistol. The stippling on this does look like it has a machine finish, uh, unlike the Jag one, which looked like it was hand stippled. Um, but this one does still offer the texture and tactile, tact, tactileness, tactileness of the Jag one, uh, which is good to see because that's what you want from a stippled grip anyways. You want to have uh, great control with it. It wants to stay gripped in your hands, stay comfortable, uh, which is good to see here. Uh, next up, I do want to touch on the sights on this pistol. It does have a green fiber optic front sight, but this one features a rear fiber optic green sight uh, compared to the other ones, which were all blacked out. So that is nice to see. I will give it a little bonus point because I do like fiber optics, personal opinion. But anyways, um, finally, I will talk about the outer barrel like the others. This one does not have a fixed outer barrel, however, it does not wiggle like the EMG. It is actually very solid, as if it was a fixed one, but as you can see when you rack it back, there is a little bit of movement. Whoopsie. There is a little bit of movement showing that it is indeed not fixed. Lastly, the feature that I wanted to point out with the KLI pistol is that it is a 5.1 length. Compared to the other pistols, which are 5.4 length, which is accurate in the films and to the real firearm. However, being a player in Airsoft, I do want my pistols to be compatible with aftermarket parts in the case I wanna swap something out or something breaks. So I will give this pistol a bonus point for being the correct compatibility length for aftermarket parts. All right, next on our grading scale will be the performance of each pistol. We're gonna start off with the trigger response. So with the EMG, let's go ahead and check this guy out. The trigger response is, I would say, pretty mushy. Um, right from the get-go, there is quite a bit of room for that trigger pull before there's a release. There's that release. 
and the, the wall on that release is very short so there's no over pull but just the front end is pretty mushy and not very satisfying for me next with the Jag let's go ahead and check this guy out now the Jag is a little bit stiff in the front and then after that stiffness is very short amount of travel for that stiffness but right after that stiffness it's a clear break and then it pushes into a little bit more of a squish but I would say I would prefer the brake being uh, more forward than on the rear so I do prefer this over the EMG lastly we have the KLI now the KLI by far the best trigger pull and tr best trigger response out of all of these ones. This has a very clear break right at the front, right there, and the over travel after your pull is very short as well, which is nice to see, and very quick, very snappy, very responsive. So I will have to give the trigger response point to the KLI. A quick disclaimer, the EMG and the JAG are not within CQB limits. Now this means they both are shooting hotter than 350. They both curl in at around, I want to say, 360 to 370. Compared to the KLI, the KLI is the only pistol out of the bunch that shoots within CQB limits. It shoots around 330 with green gas and around 350 to 360 with CO2. So since the KLI Babiaga is the only pistol that is within CQB limits right out of the box and is CO2 compatible, I'm gonna have to give it some bonus points for performance wise. So for the rest of the performance test, we're gonna have to finish this out on the range. So let's go ahead and shoot these pistols. All right guys, we're out here on the range and we're gonna be doing an accuracy test with each of these pistols. We have a target set up roughly 50 feet away from us and we're gonna be taking 10 shots aimed at center mass to compare the grouping of each pistol to see which one comes out on top. Now we are using two fives and green gas with each of these pistols. So let's go ahead and start with EMG, see how it performs and then move on to the others. That was 10. Let's move on to the next one. All right, here we have the Jag. Let's go ahead and test the accuracy on this guy. All right. I lost count. How many is that? That was 11. 11 shots. All right, lastly, we have the KLI. So let's go ahead and finish off this test. Shoot some targets. That was 10. All right, so after we've shot these targets and marked where the shots are, we're gonna be comparing the sizing of these groupings. So with the EMG, as you can see, it's a little bit on the wider side, uh, but it's pretty standard out of the box. I do like how all these shots did hit the target. There was no flyers, so I'll give it a a little note for that. Moving on to the Jag though, we do have the narrowest grouping out of all three, which is good to see. We did have some flyers though, I would say two flyers that flew right under, but it is very narrow and I would say tight in my opinion. And lastly, the KLI with, I would say the tightest grouping with the exception of one flyer, but it did hit the head, so I meant to do that. But Looking at that, that compared to the Jag, I would say I would prefer this grouping over the Jag uh, just because I was aiming center mass and it's pretty accurate. All right, let's head on back. All right, that was a pretty good time at the range, but now we're going to test the gas efficiency of each mag that comes out of the box, which each pistol. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with the EMG. It's already loaded, thank you, Boaz. All right, oh, classy men always wear iPro, so let's do that. All right, here we go. First mag with the EMG. Does not lock back, by the way. But let's go ahead and load it up some more. I think that was only like two or three shots after being unloaded, but We'll just say that was one mag. All right, load it up the second mag. Here we go. All 
and pooped out. I would say that was six, six rounds maybe. Not even halfway through the second mag, so pretty disappointing there. Let's go ahead and get on to the next one. Next up, we're gonna test out the Jag. So already locked and loaded again. Thank you, Boaz. Let's do it. Up, oh, locked back. Good to see. All right. Let's load up that second mag. See how much more we got. All right, we got the second mag in. Let's see how much further it goes. Positive lock back and full mag. Wow, that was really surprising. All right, third mag. Let's see how much further it goes. Wow, that was really nice. Three and a half, oh no, two and a half mags. Wow, very solid performance by the Jag. Very surprised, good to see. And finally, we have the KLI pistol, so let's go ahead and shoot this guy again. Loaded. Thank you, boss. I love you. It's not locked back, but that was the rest of the mag. Let's fill up that next one. All right, we got the second mag in. Let's finish it off. And we're out. I think I heard it dying a little bit, but just for completionist sake, let's go ahead and just load it up just a few more, see how many shots we can get. All right, third mag in. Yep. And there it goes. So that was two mags and maybe three shots after that. So as a roundup, the EMG came out as a standard mag with uh, one mag and some change. Um, and then next up came the KLI with two mags and some change. And the winner of this is the Jag with two and a half mags. Last thing we're gonna compare here is the price point of each pistol. So starting out with the EMG, Airsoft GI has it priced at 195. The Jag is priced at 150. And the KLI Baba Yaga is priced at 135 for green gas mags and 140 for the CO2 mag out of the box. So for that category, we're gonna give the point to the Baba Yaga since it is the cheapest out of the bunch. But I do have to give some note that the Jag is not too far off priced from the KLI and it is officially licensed with the trademarks. So nice to see there. In conclusion, out of all three of these pistols, the KLI Baba Yaga came out on top in terms of points. But I do wanna give credit to the Jag because it did come at a very, very close second. In my opinion, these pistols are very comparable in terms of performance and price point. Uh, just for a few bucks more, you do get the trademarks on the Jag, which you don't get on the KLI, but the performance is very similar and the gas efficiency in the magazines is uh, very nice in the Jag. So I do want to give commendation to the Jag pistol. So for those of you who may have been keeping track of the score at home, you may have noticed that the EMG pistol did come in last place. Now this doesn't mean that this pistol is terrible at all, we just happen to compare it to other great competition such as the KLI and the Jag pistol. Now since this pistol is operating off of the WeTech system, it is a bit overpriced in my opinion just for some trademarks and a nice look. Now some of you may know that the Baba Yaga has come with a bit of controversy, but I do believe that the weight was worth it. The Baba Yaga was created with the help of Tanya Koba, who is basically one of the original creators of gas blowback systems and is considered the Einstein of airsoft in Asia. And with his help, KLI was able to produce a very solid performing system with an affordable price. Now, if you stuck by with this very in-depth video of the Combat Master style pistols, we wanna thank you, as well as reminding you to like, comment, and subscribe, as well as ringing the bell icon wherever it is to be notified of whenever we upload new videos. We do upload every Monday and Friday, so stay tuned for our next video. This is Kevin from Airsoft GI, and I think I'm gonna keep this blazer. What? But that's mine. It's mine now. Uh, for 200 bucks, it's yours. We'll see about that.